It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This Pride, everyone's coming through for the Trevor Project on YouTube Shorts. Join us! Create a short showing how you're stepping up for Pride using the hashtag YouTube Pride Challenge. Come through for Pride on YouTube Shorts. Visit youtube.com backslash pride. You are Locked On Bengals, your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, Bengals fans, and welcome to another episode of the Locked On Bengals Podcast. I'm your host, Jake Lisko. He's your host, James Rapine. Today, we break down the latest Bengals news as the Bengals prepare to take on the Cleveland Browns with some seeding at stake. If you missed The playoff seeding scenarios, we talked about a lot of those earlier this week, a couple episodes ago. If you're new to the podcast, make sure you subscribe on YouTube or hit follow anywhere you get your podcast and we'll be delivered to your device five days a week for all of the latest and greatest Bengals news analysis and more. James, let's get started with the news of the day. BJ Hill and Joe Mixon, two more starters, hit the COVID list for the Bengals. Neither guy, at least Joe Mixon, I would say, expected to play this week, but Zach Taylor did clarify that any of the players that are on the COVID list, specifically Mm -hmm. Joe Mixon, he was asked about, that are vaccinated, are eligible to return really at any time if they can get two negative tests. Otherwise, the five-day threshold of no symptoms applies. And so for a lot of these guys, Probably wouldn't expect to see them play this week, especially with the news that Joe Burrow is not expecting to play against the Cleveland Browns. And by the way, for those that are were wondering, I was resting like Joe Burrow is going to do. He said he's slept in multiple times this week already past seven. Uh, so probably his off day, I would imagine Tuesday, he slept in past seven because he's not starting this week. And he might dress as like an emergency backup uh zach taylor said that that uh, is still up in the air but uh yeah it's brandon allen time which you know i still think the Bengals have a chance to win and we can dive into that and you know when we cross over with jeff lloyd later and all of that but jake i think this is the right call because saturday i think the chiefs are going to kick the hell out of the broncos maybe i'm wrong but is that going to happen and then are the texans going to rise to the occasion is davis mills and look semi-promising and brandon cook's going to uh, help out his old buddy from from the Rams and Zach Taylor and uh, and get it done. I just don't think so against the Titans. So if that's the case, you might as well get Burrow as healthy and as ready as possible, especially because of how he's playing. We've talked about it, right? How he's just balling out. Well, I want as healthy and as close to 100% of Joe Burrow as, I, I, as you can get before that playoff game. And it is worth noting that Burrow said point blank, he is healthy enough to play. It's not like that knee is worse than they're leading on or anything like that. He's you'd be ready to go, but uh, Zach Taylor decided to to rest him, which I, I think is the right call. Imagine putting Joe Burrow out there in a game that might change your seed one spot, one way or another. Might, and, and this is why I agree with you, James, is because the impact on seeding is nebulous in the first place. Whether they can get a two seed, very unlikely. Whether they go three or four. I'm not sure how much it really matters at that point if you're the three or four seed. Maybe if you're the three seed, there's a scenario where you, you might get an extra home game, right? And and besides that, you're weighing that or or trying to strategically seed yourself to get an opponent that you like better, a matchup that you like better against the risk of injury where Miles Garrett's still going to play in this game and all these guys for the Browns you know, still have – things on the line for contract incentives, et cetera. These guys are going to be playing hard football for the Browns in week 18. And they have their own list of injuries, but you're putting out a patchwork offensive line. Jackson Carmen going to start at left guard this week. Still Isaiah Prince at right tackle. You uh, asked Zach Taylor to confirm that there's no hope for Riley reef to return this season. And unfortunately there appears to be no hope for Riley reef to return this season. So you've got three backups continuing to play on the offensive line. And if your choice is remove all risk for freak injury to Joe Burrow in week 18 of a game that may or may not impact your seating, or 
try your hardest to win a game with a COVID ravaged and potentially injury ravaged roster this week. I think that that decision kind of makes itself. Yeah. I, the, and that's part of it too, right? Like, do I want Trey Hill? Not that Trey Hopkins has been great, but do I really want Trey Hill in at center this week? In the, and you just outlined how it's not a preseason game, but damn it, it isn't a unique got to have it game. And thank goodness it isn't <laughs> with the more of these, you know, COVID-19 positives that are, are happening right now. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, this could work out well because you have a surging team, a quarterback that's playing at a high level and admitted that it's nice to have a, you know, a mental uh, Joe Bro's a big breathing guy, right? He, well, uh <laughs> it's going to be good for him to take a breath this week and and rest that pinky rest. And he's still going to get throws in. He didn't practice on Wednesday. He's still going to get a lot of throws in though. You better believe that it's not like he's just going to sit on the couch and eat built bars. This dude's still going to be working out and eating built bars. So um, yeah, I think, uh, I think this is good. And ultimately, and I think this is after the news conferences, I feel even better now um, that they've done this about the Bengals chances of making a little bit of a run. And I know we have, what, one, two, three, you know, six shows before the playoff game, not including this one. But, uh, whew, uh, you know, you, you can't help but start to think about it now that, you know, Burrow's out this week. Yeah, and, and excited to see what kind of run they can make, right? We've got an <laughs> entirely new regime, a new quarterback. It's no Marvin Lewis this time. No Owen X record in the playoffs in prime time, whatever it is. They, oh, they've no. got a prime time player. Who, who loves these situations in Joe Burrow. But I have a follow-up question, James. Two follow-up questions, in fact, uh, about Joe Burrow's pressure today. One, oh. is is he a breathing guy? Or did you just make that up? No. I'm dead serious. So if you watch, and I, and I love it. I noticed it. Uh, when he, he was mic'd up week four, right? Or was it NFL Films that had something? The Jaguars game, remember the You Can't Zero Me? Well, multiple times yep. you could tell he was like, all right, let's go, Joe. Like he, so that's where I caught it. And he does it like, I'll sit down for news conferences. It's weird that I'm analyzing him this close, but I cover him. So I feel like I should, I guess, or just maybe I'm a freak either way. Um, yeah. He'll sit down for news conferences and he'll go and then go like, so yeah, I think he's very into let me get a breath here and then think about what the next task is, whether it's answer James Rapine's questions or, you know, throw touchdown passes. Okay. The, the other one is <laughs> given that he wasn't playing or, or has been ruled out to play this week. Yeah. Was this not a perfect opportunity to ask uh -oh. Joe Burrow my chess questions, James? No, I, I, I remember on. actually, no, I actually remember because uh, I thought about it, but there was probably like two more, three more questions that I actually had for him football wise. Yeah. You know, we're only going to get him for another eight to 10 minutes. And this is yeah. the COVID nightmare, eight to 10 minutes before the playoff game. So that's, that's the thing. So I'm just I get it. A hard I, time. I understand. No, I know. <laughs> and I'm going to get it. We'll get it. Believe me. I, I can't wait for open locker room. Hopefully it happens next year. Cause when it does, you guys think the locked on Bengals podcast is good. Now just wait until, you know, we get Joe Burrow and checkmate and, and start asking him chess questions. We'll just have to, Knock on Emily Parker's door, our pal Emily Parker. Hey, we need Joe Burrow for five minutes. Promise it's only chess questions. That's it. That's all we need. Uh, that, that, see, it sounds better to you than it does to me. But if we're getting Burrow on, then I'll take it. <laughs> oh, I think it I think it would be great. And, and and we would ask how how that translates to the way he thinks on the football field, of course. Coming up next, Whole Zach shot. Taylor also addressed to the media addressed the media on Wednesday, talked about Jamar Chase's rookie of the year chances and more. And then later on in the show, we've got Jeff Lloyd from Lockdown Browns as we do our Thursday crossover. Wow, well, 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 well. Rookie of the year. It's been this roller coaster where it's Jamar, he's the rookie of the year after a bunch of preseason drops. And then it was, oh no, it's got to be Mac Jones. And well, now it's back to Jamar. If you think it's going to be Jamar Chase, you can wager on him right now at Bet Online. BetOnline.ag is a one-stop shop for all your betting needs. So maybe you think Joe Burrow's going to shock the world and win MVP. I think that's going to be hard to do, not playing in Week 18, getting more stats. But I do think comeback player of the year, he should win it. 
So if you want to wager on that, go for it. Or maybe you think it is going to be Dak Prescott because he has that star on his helmet. You can wager on him as well. All of your betting needs in one spot. BetOnline.ag, including Zach Taylor, Coach of the Year, or maybe you just think Brandon Allen is going to kick the tar out of the Browns this weekend. Go to BetOnline.ag right now. Check out their new updated desktop and mobile site. And when you sign up and make that first deposit, make sure you use promo code Locked On, and you're going to get a 50% welcome bonus. It's free money, baby, that you can use to wager maybe on the Bengals in the playoffs and so much more from football, basketball, hockey, to boxing and UFC. Go to BetOnline.ag. Use promo code Locked On to get a 50% welcome bonus. BetOnline, where the game starts. PristineAuction.com is the most trusted sports memorabilia auction site with an A-plus Better Business Bureau rating. Auctions at PristineAuction.com start at just $1, and each day there are over 1,000 autographed items available so that you can win authentic signatures at affordable prices. Just last week, an autographed Justin Herbert jersey sold for $110. And deals like this are happening all the time at PristineAuction.com. They have just about every player you could ever want, including Tom Brady, Patrick Mahomes, and so much more. And every item at pristineauction.com comes with a certificate of authenticity from the industry's most reputable authenticators. Upgrade your collection of signed memorabilia today and get $10 off of your first item when you use the code LOCKED. Be sure to sign up right now because deals are ending every day. Again, that's code LOCKED for $10 off of your first piece of signed memorabilia at pristineauction.com. Jamar Chase should be the rookie of the year right now. I, I'm pretty sold on that. There are people that still say Mac Jones is a rookie quarterback that led the New England Patriots to the playoffs last year. And I think we've talked about this. I thought Justin Jefferson should have been the rookie of the year over Justin Herbert. I understand why Justin Herbert won rookie of the year. I thought Justin Jefferson was better at his position than, than Herbert was at his, but I get it. It's a quarterback thing, but the guy for the Bengals this year, Jamar Chase, has broken Justin Jefferson's records. Has Mac Jones been better than Justin Herbert as a rookie? I, I think that's a resounding no. To me, this question answers itself. What was it you, James, that asked this question of Zach Taylor in his presser today? It was, and dang, I was hoping you'd toss to it because it's actually got my question in there. So here's me asking Zach about the rookie of the year. His production, uh, what he's done in the run game, and, and the impact he's had. Yeah. Do you think he's a clear-cut offensive rookie of the year? Um, I, I think he's certainly earned it. You know, at, at the same time, I don't follow the performances from everybody else. But um, all I can say is I'm really glad that he plays receiver for us. I'm glad he's on our team. Um, what he's done as a rookie has been tremendous. Um, if he got that award, that would that would be one of the least surprising things I've ever seen in my life because he's earned it. Um, I'm really glad that you pointed out his effort in the run game because he's not afraid to come in that box and dig people out and chase guys down the field and help his teammates. And and to me, that speaks more about Jamar than than the three touchdowns he had in the game receiving. You know, it's it's more just um, what he's done for his teammates and for this offense, for this team, and giving us that energy and the willingness to get dirt, down and dirty. And, uh, you know, it, that that part has been what's made me the most proud of, of his performance this year and um, not surprising at all to see how he goes about his business and see the success that he's had. Ultimate team player, Jamar Chase, James. Yeah, it, look, in that's the thing, too. It, it, the re- part of the reason why I asked Zach this, because I, I do feel like Jamar Chase should be rookie of the year. I don't want people to just think it's stats because – when you look at the Justin Jefferson year last year, and then you look at Jamar Chase this year, you might just be like, oh, well, maybe that's just the new age NFL. You get these receivers, you feed them as a rookie, you, they put up huge numbers. Well, I think those two guys are, one, just different than a lot of rookies. But two, even if you just wipe away those numbers, I think Jamar has been such a valuable piece. And I've said this a couple of times on the pod. He's played more snaps than T, more snaps than Boyd and it not just because T was injured like he always leads the Bengals receivers in snaps because of how versatile he is and because they can use him all over the field because he can be that chess piece that uh that you know that they love at the wide receiver spot so yeah I mean give him the damn trophy I that's why you drafted him give him the trophy I think that 
this needs to not go the way of the MVP. It's not most valuable offensive rookie is, is something that I saw somebody say somewhere. And, and honestly, like if you want to argue with the other candidates for offensive rookie of the year, I think they're like Creed Humphrey and maybe Penny Sewell and maybe Rashawn Slater. But I don't think any of those guys have done for their team what Jamar Chase has done for the Cincinnati Bengals. Jamar Chase for the Cincinnati Bengals has essentially been the primary reason that they've won, what, three three games and has just shifted the way defenses approach the Cincinnati Bengals, has apparently unlocked, you know, there's a very easy narrative to spin here, unlocked Joe Burrow's deep ball and Mm -hmm. unlocked some of Joe Burrow's potential, has given him that safety blanket, given him that trusted target, and and to me, has helped this entire team level up. Now, I don't think that any of the other players I've just named have that argument. I know we talked about Jamar Chase's Rookie of the Year uh, candidacy the other day, but when we start to talk about some of these things that don't show up on the show up on the stat sheet that you mentioned, James, I think that the 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 impact is very easy to see. It's not even like you have to dig that deep to see how no. Jamar Chase has helped this team. Agreed. I totally agree. And that's the thing, like you mentioned most valuable. I, I think what he's doing is rarer than what Mac Jones has done in new England. Like, sorry, I do. I like, I, so more valuable. I think there are more quarterbacks starting maybe two quarterbacks playing Sunday that can do a lot of what Mac Jones has done this year for the Patriots versus how many guys period can do what Jamar Chase has done. And he's the best rookie receiver in Bengals history. He's probably, you know, outside of Randy Moss, who is like Chris Carter said, he's the best rookie receiver ever. Okay. And he played with Randy Moss. Uh, He said it on NFL game day more or one of these shows on NFL network, I believe it was. So it's definitely was NFL network. It wasn't on ESPN. So point being he's up there and it's a special year. And I think it's a no brainer uh, for offensive rookie of the year. And I don't know, let me ask you this. You think the Bengals make the playoffs if they don't draft Jamar chase, if they take, let's say, let's say they take it. Uh, what, what was his LSU teammates name that went to the Panthers? I forget his name. He obviously Harris hasn't Marshall. had it. Yeah. Yeah. Marshall. You think they take Marshall. He's, you know, the three in this offense, they don't have that explosive guy like chase that's commanding the deep. I don't think they make the playoffs without him. I really don't. I think that that's very difficult to say. He, he's definitely made huge plays. It's just Joe Burrow is still really good and has taken a step this year, but it would be a big question as to who's going to replace mm-hmm. uh, that that role in the offense. Is it, is it Rondale Moore maybe instead? And I know he's kind of disappeared in Arizona. It hasn't really been used on the field at all, but very short, good athlete, really good athlete, right? Has some deep ball ability, at least showed it early in the year. So I don't know, like maybe they find a, a guy that can do some of that. But yeah, I think that Jamar Chase has made a huge difference for this team. I think it's really easy to argue that he is the reason that that they're going to the playoffs. I think we, we talked about this a couple of days ago, too. He's like a fringe all pro, maybe second team all pro this year. I don't know if he gets ahead of, you know, Cooper Cup, Devontae Adams just because of the the prolific year Cooper Cup has had and how good Devontae sure. Adams is. But, you know, if he doesn't have that midseason slump, you're, you're talking about a guy that in his rookie year in 16 games, you know, just a few yards away from breaking Chad Johnson's franchise record. And and, and Chad Johnson was kind of good at football, you might remember. <laughs> I And I think he still might. I, you know, I, I, would, yeah. I would be surprised if Jamar Chase doesn't at least dress for Sunday's game. Again, you don't have a whole, we'll, we'll dive into this. It's not a 90 man roster. It's still a 53 man roster. Yeah. So they're going to have to have a lot of these guys dressed for Sunday real quick. You asked about Joe Burrow's breathing. Uh, CJ Uzama uh, was asked about Joe Burrow getting mad in about midway through this uh, exchange. He talks about the breathing. So this is, this is good. This is CJ Uzama animated in uh, telling and talking about Joe Burrow in a way that only Uzama can. Let's talk about Joe being stone-faced, cool, never know. How do you know when he's mad? Oh, you can tell. I mean, it'll give you a look. Like, I've gotten the look before, and I'm like, damn, that's not what you want to see out of your court. You don't don't want that look. He still comes back to you, but um, it's it's just like a – 
like it's all right like we got this face right now and then it's just like a like it'll just give you like a side eye and you're like dang yep that's the one i kind of messed up that one didn't i and then you go over to the sideline and then you talk about it and then he'll like smile and be like dude you're good whatever um but that's kind of how you know he, he doesn't it's not like a he doesn't like mother f you or like just start just blowing up on you it's just like a come on you know better type thing i've been told there's a breath is there a breath like a deep sigh like a deep exhale <sighs> Yeah, but that it just depends. Like in the, I haven't gotten that in the game, so I'm cool. Um, I, I've gotten that in meetings before for sure, um, and I, then you, it's followed by the look. And he sits in the front, and the tight end sit in the back, so it's kind of like everyone's staring at you at that point. So then you just are like, right, I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna talk for the rest of this meeting right now. Um, I haven't gotten too many of those though. Wait, let me, yeah, let me make the. I haven't gotten too many. Of them. I've gotten like, we'll say like two, three. Can you reprise your imitation of his deadpan after the Jacksonville game? Can you reprise that imitation of uh, how of deadpan what? he is about how deadpan he is about, hey, I'm Joey, you know, franchise, and I throw darts. Can you kind of reprise that? Uh, all I remember right now is him saying, you can't f and zero me. <laughs> so that's, that's, where, that's, that's where my head's at right now. So the answer is no, because that's all I'm thinking of. I'm like, yeah, don't zero him, stupid. That's fantastic. <laughs> I, I was I love that. Oh man, there's so there's good. nothing to even nothing to even add to that, James. Coming up next, let's hear from Jeff Lloyd from Lockdown Browns as we complete the last crossover of 2021's regular season. Yeah, we got to dive into Get Upside though, the incredible app that's going to save you money each and every time you fill up your gas tank. It's free. You can download it in the App Store or, or Google Play, and you're going to get up to 25 cents off per gallon every time you fill up. Plus, right now, our listeners are getting a bonus 25 cents off per gallon on their first fill up with promo code TOUCHDOWN. So grab your iPhone, grab your Android, grab your smartphone right now. Download GetUpside, G-E-T-U-P-S-I-D-E, and sign up and use promo code TOUCHDOWN to save money instantly. You got to fill up anyways. You might as well save money while you do it. Get upside again. Use promo code touchdown for a bonus 25 cents off per gallon every time you fill up. The Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is underway. The Ultimate NBA Mock Draft has every pick from the local experts of the Locked On Network. The breakdowns of those picks from Rafael Barlow and the Locked On NBA Big Board experts, plus Odyssey Insider, former GM Ryan McDonough, NBA champion Brian Scalabrini, and insider Jimmy Patsos. The Ultimate NBA Mock Draft is a five-episode journey through the NBA Draft. Search Ultimate NBA Mock Draft and listen today. We're now joined by Locked On Browns' Jeff Lloyd here for the Thursday crossover. And it's the B-Squads, Jeff, in this contest between the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. Baker Mayfield not going to play. Joe Burrow not going to play. The Bengals have guys on the COVID list. They're going to try to get healthy for the playoffs. The Browns looks like the injury list is pretty long in Cleveland as well. So let's start with who is going to play this week in Cleveland. Is Miles Garrett going to go out there and try to rack up some stats for defensive player of the year? Or what are you expecting from the Browns on Sunday? I think it'll come down to letting it be Miles Garrett's call. Um, He's had a fantastic season. Look, it's over as far as defensive player of the year. I mean, I don't understand how TJ Watt probably didn't wrap this thing up uh, on Monday night. Once you're talking 21 and a half sacks, I think that's pretty much wrapped up. Um, but, you know, Miles Garrett, if they've given everybody else the choice of playing or whether or not they want to play, like they've done with Baker Mayfield to this point, I think Miles Garrett, most likely, I would say maybe Miles Garrett plays a little bit. Miles Garrett, the way he's talked this year, his actions have been this year. He doesn't seem like a guy that's going to step away from the team. Understanding, even if it is necessarily maybe the right thing to do, not to mention, got to keep in mind, in 2019, Miles Garrett missed a lot of time. So I, I think Miles Garrett, as long as it probably feels where it felt Monday night in Pittsburgh, he's going to go out there. As far as other positions, anybody's guess is as good as mine. Kareem Hunt still isn't back yet, um, bar barely participating in practice. But then there's also the issue of now Dearness Johnson is in the COVID protocol. There's an opportunity where he may not play Sunday, um, which leaves you in a conundrum because you have Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb with a little bit of a rib injury. Um, I don't know who plays running back in that scenario for Case Keenum. Not necessarily that it really even matters. Um, you also wonder about safeties. John Johnson the third, uh, Ronnie Harrison. They've also been out the last couple of weeks. Is I mean, Ronnie Harrison's a free agent after this year. 
If you're Ronnie Harrison, you're probably looking to not play in this game. Last thing you want to do is end up where you're rehabbing in the, you know, uh, during, you know, a free agent cycle. John Johnson III would be nice to have him. He was a guy they had highly invested on him. There were times where he played really well against the Bengals, perhaps the first what, first round with the Bengals. Other times where he didn't play so well. Um, but we've got to see some young, young players. Finally got to see the best of Grant Elpit. Um, we're really seeing some good things from uh, Jeremiah Wusu koromoa Jacob Phillips got back late in the fold here as the season's gone on, a player they have high hopes for, hopefully heading into what will be year three for them. It's going to be interesting. And for you know all you diehard Bengals fans, all you diehard Browns fans, there's going to be a lot of who? And what and wait, 70. Did we do we even have a 79 on the roster? Um, but that's what happens. You know, look, week 18, it's watered down as much as they wanted week 18 to be great. I think there's maybe about one game of significance on the schedule this weekend, but hey, people are gonna watch anyway. Yeah, I'm gonna be there. So yeah, I definitely think people are gonna watch <laughs> and uh it, you know, it's just where it's at. Let, let me ask you this, Jeff, because I think a lot of Bengals fans watched that Monday night game earlier this week and and Baker and Ben and I think most were, I don't know. I don't know where people were. I was uh, undercover hoping the Browns would, you know, to beat Ben one time at Heinz Field there and send him off with an L. But that being said, let's talk about Baker a little bit because he's taken a lot of criticism, rightfully so. I thought he played awful on Monday. Is it him? Is it the injury? Is it Stefanski? What is it specifically with him? I get it. There aren't a lot of weapons there. Uh, so that's probably part of it. But the Baker I remember was better than that. And I see a lot of social media defending Baker, Baker, ripping Baker and ripping Stefanski and praising Stefanski. So what uh, what the hell's going on with your head coach and your quarterback and, and who's going to survive it? Well, I mean, if you're going to put this down and essentially basically what you're looking for here, I guess is a nice big old pie chart. Look, the certain pers- the largest percentage of it has to go to Baker Mayfield. Um, and if this was the best he could do, and it was because of the injury, then it's one of those things where maybe you have to say, look, I think I can go, but guys, this is what I've been the last two weeks. This has been the best of me. So maybe let's take the decision out of my hands. I'll do whatever I need to do for you guys to be out there on Sunday. And even had Case Keenum, you know, there were times where it was small miracles that Baker Mayfield made it out, you know, to certain games to start, you know, but the weeks he had or, you know, the pound he had taken the week before, this, that, or the other thing. And you look at it, you know, took nine sacks Monday night against Pittsburgh. This was similar to the Arizona game where he took a pounding. Then the Browns were also coming back on a short week, played Thursday night against Denver, and it just wasn't enough time for him to get ready. So sometimes you got to wonder whether or not, you know, your 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 guts are bigger than your brain, in, in so, so to speak. But in the same respect, though, there would have been a huge part of this fan base and a huge part of the Cleveland Browns media that would have said, wow, why isn't he playing? So not his throwing shoulder. So it's a damned if you do, damned if you don't. Obviously, you know, he put it on himself. He's cost himself a ton of money. And I think that's one thing that, you know, I think is pretty noble in the respect of what he did for this team. Look, you can look at the numbers, and there's been plenty of guys in the NFL that would have said, hey, you want to know it? Because the Ravens would have said, man, dude, you're killing everything we got going on right now. Would have stepped away, gotten the surgeries. Hey, I did the best I could. Da, 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 da. But you want to get to the other factors. Look, you, you know, you had a revolving door at wide receiver all season long. Donovan Peoples Jones was the talk of summer. Oh my God, he's the best wide receiver out there. He looks fantastic. And there's been times where he's really, really good. And then there's been times where there's crucial drops. Um, everybody wants to go back to the, you know, the two interceptions that happened in Green Bay. Look, you want to be a number one wide receiver in the NFL? You're going to get bumped. You're going to get tugged. And you want to know what? It's not always going to get called. Get off it. Get separation any means necessary. Because if you're the number one wide receiver, a lot of times ball's coming your way. Even coverage is that close. So they certainly need to upgrade there. Look, like I told you guys, you know, Joe Burrow, fantastic, been playing incredible. But any one of, you know, Chase, um, Higgins, or Boyd, they'd be wide receiver one in Cleveland the day they walked in the door. It would just be that much of a difference. So they're certainly derived of talent. They're derived of separation ability in the wide receiver room. This tight end room, you know, Harrison Bryant, David Njoku, Austin Hooper, there's a boatload invested in there. Njoku, former first-round pick. They had $11 million a year in Hooper for two seasons if he sticks around. Uh, Harrison Bryant was a, you know, was an early fourth-round pick. They've never gotten the production out of that position. They had invested into it. I mean, you're thinking 125, 130 receptions between three tight ends that you have this much invested in. Never worked out there. Injuries. The injuries for me is not one thing I'm really going to use for the Browns because it was never really so-and-so's gone, he's on IR. A lot of guys got injured, missed time, but did come back. So, I mean, to use injuries is really kind of a difficult excuse in that situation just because they didn't lose a lot of guys for the year. Yeah, guys missed two, three weeks, maybe a month. Look, they had their COVID bout. 
which pretty much every team in the NFL has. And I wish you guys the best because I'd hate to see it come down to that for you guys. So maybe it's a good thing that it's going down this week as opposed to hopefully not next week for you guys. Um, but it's been all over the place. Coach Stefanski, I think the problem is, is Baker Mayfield wants to play a game where the ball's going more vertical. And Coach Stefanski and the offensive coaches look at it realistically and say, we ain't got it. We ain't got those people to do this. Uh, you know, so it's great. I understand this is what you want to do. But what we're looking at, and yeah, yeah, you threw it to the tight end. Guess what? Nobody else was open downfield anyway. Yes, you had to hit the check down to Kareem Hunt. Nobody else was open downfield anyway. Some of the shorter routes were open. But I know Baker in his heart of hearts, he wants to go more vertical. And what quarterback playing in 2021 would not look at some of the statistical output of his peers and say, you really want me to be okay with 220 and two touchdowns? This is a half for most guys. And, you know, for us, this is what we're trying to do as a team. Yeah, we do have a great running game, this, that, and the other thing. But the great running game is supposed to be able to close out these games. Hard is hard. He's a quarterback. He wants to throw the ball around. He wants to make plays. I don't see where it changes. I, I really don't see where it changes. I mean, you want to bring in somebody to bring in for competition and maybe call it a step sideways. But some of the realistic upgrades that could be at the quarterback for the Cleveland Browns, I just don't know how it works. I, I just don't know how you put it all together. Because if you got to trade for one of these guys, guess what? You have draft assets that you don't have now to replenish that wide receiver room, to you know fill out this defensive line now, which you could be losing some people from. So it's a really difficult situation, and everybody thinks they have the answers. Um, but at the end of the day, you know the Browns are going to look at this based on four years. 2018, 2020, you had a really good Baker Mayfield. 2019, 2021, not such a good Baker Mayfield. So the question is, you know, they attacked the defense last year. Got brought in a ton of things they need. Are they going to view to do something similar to the offensive side of the ball here to hopefully get that in check? Because I know one year ago today, the Browns weren't sitting here saying, you know, wow, we're really concerned about Baker Mayfield. They were saying, wow, we really have to get this defense up to shape. And now they did not see the complete 180 in regression of this offense. That is a great summary, a great state of the Cleveland Browns, where things are going forward. Andrew Barry, respected and paid GM up there in Cleveland. Got to let those analytics and hit the football old school folks around him get them out of this. Kevin Stefanski has got to get them out of this. It's just a year ago that the that the Cleveland Browns lost to the Kansas City Chiefs on January 17th by five points in the playoffs. Unfortunately, this game, not a ton at stake. Not a lot of players going to be playing, but these two teams will get back at it next year, and we'll talk to Jeff again then. Jeff, thanks for joining us. For the rest of you, thanks for listening to the Lockdown Bengals podcast. Jeff, yeah, one last remark. Guys, gentlemen, uh, you guys absolutely obviously been crushing it with the show, um, and this was well before the season even started. Um, I'm happy for you. I, I'm happy for both of you guys, and I got to be honest, it was a, it was, it was awesome last year just to even get into it. And look, I mean, you guys have suffered a lot doing that show. I've suffered a lot you know, at times over here with Lockdown <laughs> Browns. Um, nobody wants to be saying, woohoo, it's January 3rd. Oh, let's watch some ball games because, you know, we need this, this, and this. Uh, enjoy the ride, guys. Um, you know, I, I was definitely to the point where I knew it was over on Sunday watching it, but it was like, now what are you doing? There's just seven, seven plays now for the one. Just do something. Get some point. And then I'm like, Kansas City, just pull Burrow in the end zone. What are you guys doing? Just get something and make sure you win this. Because the last thing I wanted to see was Patrick Mahomes get the ball in his hands one more time or get the opportunity to win a coin flip. But, guys, all the congrats in the world. Um, and enjoy it. it. It was, you know, because I, I really think as long as, you know, nothing goes wrong for Cincinnati, look, it, you can score. And you can score a lot. And that can overcome a lot of deficiencies. Classy as ever, Jeff. Appreciate it, man. That's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Bengals crossover with the Locked On Browns podcast. Until next time, thanks for listening to the Locked On Podcast Network.